pleased to say the Home Secretary is with us, James Cleverly. Happy New Year. Happy New Year, Kate. You. Thanks for joining us. Now, you're going to try and baffle me with some figures. I'm going to try and keep <laughs> up. Here we go. 112,000 asylum cases have been cleared. How many are left to clear? Well, that figure will depend on how many new applications uh, come through. We had a... today? So, as of today, I've not had the chance to have a look at this morning's figures. When I go to the office later on, I'll get uh, an update. Uh, no, so the, look, the figures, as I say, I'm not going to uh, guess because we'll see what applications have come over uh, across the Christmas and New Year period. So, later on, I'll get an update. But the point is, last year, we processed 112,000 uh, applications. That includes contemporary applications that have come in in year but also that legacy backlog that we committed to clear, and we have. That is the largest number of applications processed in any year since 2002. So in over 20 years, that's the highest number we've processed. How many of those 112,000 have been allowed to stay? Well, um, the grant rate has been around 67%, which is, which is down on the previous year and indeed the year before that in terms of a uh, percentage. So actually we're seeing fewer uh, people getting grants and actually in the, uh, in the changes that we've made to legislation we'll be tightening our criteria so we envisage that grant rate coming down even further. But still. as of today, of the 112,000, only 24,000 returned, is that right? N well, look, it's... it's so last year we returned uh, 24,000. That's less than a third, isn't it? It's not necessarily the case that it's of that... Um, 112,000 uh, applications, because there will be some that were uh, ref that, that were refused or not granted asylum previously, who are um, in that 24,000. So it's not as easy to say it's 24,000 of that number. One figure we can agree with is the 17,000 plus that seem to have just sort of disappeared. Where have they gone? Well, some of them will have left. Uh, last year we saw a two-thirds. Uh, probably not all of them. But a number of them will have done so. How could that have um, happened? Well, because, I mean, unsurprisingly, if people think they're going to be unsuccessful, sometimes they slip out of the system. Sometimes they return home, sometimes they slip into uh, illicit working, which is one of the reasons why we've increased the number of raids uh, on uh, illegal employment. And that's also one of the reasons, because we've increased the number of raids, we've also seen a two-thirds increase, a 66% increase, in the number of people that we are uh, sending back home. So whether... 67%, all these numbers, I know I was never any good at math, 67% <laughs> of those that you've processed are allowed to stay. Yes, because uh, they've come from uh, war-torn uh, countries. Mm -hmm. But also what we are doing is uh, we've put in place now tougher legislation. So as we move forward with this process, we will have a tighter set of criteria than we had in the past. We should see that uh, proportion of grants probably coming down. And we are taking action, and we are continuing to take action to secure our borders and stop the boats. But we don't know where these 17,000 people are. Well, as I say, some of them would have left, some of them would have slipped into the know. illicit economy. It's not possible to say exactly where, because people, unsurprisingly, if they think they're going to be refused uh, asylum, um, consciously slip out of the system. Got a very good chance of not being refused but the refused point, asylum. But the point being, but the point being, we go looking for them. Okay. Our enforcement rates have increased and a two-thirds and a two-thirds increase has meant that, well, as I say, we returned 24,000 people yeah. last year. Uh, you did, and 88,000 remained. Um, you brought down the numbers by deploying an additional 1,200 case workers. Mm. What was stopping you doing that previously? Well, I, I don't know. Um, I can only deal with so I can, I can only deal with the department that uh, that I took over when I was appointed. Should have been done earlier then. When I was it? appointed Home Secretary, well, we've seen that it's worked. It has worked. We uh, we was that not we the got. You asked? Well, when I when I got there, uh, we had a, a very very um, I think a very effective leadership, real targets. I pay tribute actually to Robert Jenrick, my predecessor who was um, in large part responsible for some of these changes. We saw more people, better processes, stronger leadership, real targets and accountability. And what we saw was a very significant increase in the speed with which we processed these applications with no loss 
of quality. And as I say, I pay tribute to Robert okay. for, for very much driving he that forward. Have, he should have got more case workers earlier, shouldn't he? Well, look, we've seen it worked. So now we know it so works. Yes, it's going to say it's going to stay in place. And as we process applications in the future, we have now got the larger number of people and a better process. Why do you not want to say yes? He should have done it earlier. Well, look, because I'm not going to criticise uh, stuff that I wasn't directly involved. That. In. I mean, it's, but the it's point it's is, so the work. point is. Uh, Rob uh, was responsible for putting this process in place. Uh, it's an effective process and it's done exactly what we wanted it to do by clearing that backlog. How many Albanians who arrived on small boats have been returned in 2022 and 2023? Well, last year we returned over 5,000 uh, Albanians. Uh, I don't have the figure for the uh, previous year, but, but last year is up on previous years. And actually, because of the work that we're doing with Albania, uh, dissuading people from leaving in the first place, returning those people who have uh, arrived here, sharing intelligence with the Albanian authorities. And I hosted the Albanian interior minister as one of my first meetings when I became Home Secretary. We've seen a 90% reduction in Albanian small boat arrivals, which yeah. I think is a real success story. Yeah, a 30 odd percent uh, down, isn't it, uh, on people arriving on small boats. So in, to in, gen yeah. in general, 36% actually. There you We've go. Got the updated figures. There you go. So the numbers have come I'm down. I'm glad to hear it. Uh, so we don't really need to waste 240 million quid giving money to Rwanda? Well, look, I've always said that Rwanda is part of a wider plan. Rwanda has an incredibly important deterrent effect, not just to, who? Not to, to people coming from other places. Like? So, so we will... Well, people, people try to come here from all over the world. Um, we've got a very good relationship with Albania and it is working. We're building similar relationships with other countries across uh, uh, Europe. And as a result, we're but, down 36%. But, yes, indeed. But I am determined to make sure that we stop the boats and stop the boats completely. And that means working with international partners, including France, including uh, Albania, including Romania and other countries around Europe. It means uh, breaking the business model of those people smugglers. But it also means having a meaningful deterrent. And the Rwanda plan is part of that deterrent. No, no one element. Well, it will deter. And we know it's already having an element of deterrent, even before it's fully up and running, because we interview people when they arrive, when they uh, um, uh, put forward applications for asylum, and they tell us that other people that, they, that were planning to come to the UK have chosen not to because of the deterrent effect of Rwanda, and that's before it's that's even apocryphal. fully up and running. It's not apocryphal. It is the interviews, it is what people tell us when we interview them. Now, the point is, once it is up and running, it will have an even stronger deterrent effect. When will and it, it up will, and running? And it will be added, it will add to the other areas of work that we have put in place that are also having an effect. So it's the combination of these things. No one element on its own, it's the combination of things. OK. Um, I know you to be a good bloke, so what happened with this rehypnol stuff? Oh, look, that was... Just clarify it for us. Yes, look, it was it was uh, it was a joke that I made, um, and of course, uh, you know, I regret it and I apologise immediately. That apology is heartfelt. Um, but the point that uh, the point that I've made is that, as Home Secretary, I was the first Home Secretary to put forward legislation to toughen our ability to deal with spiking. My first visit as Home Secretary to, was to uh, an investigation team investigating violence against women and girls. When I was Foreign Secretary, I set a target that 80% of our aid has got to demonstrably have a positive effect uh, for Which is women why you and have girls. Said it, really. I shouldn't have said it, and I apologised immediately. And as I say, was that it, apology was it heartfelt. Because you trusted a journalist, or was it because it was an off colour remark that you're sorry? Well, I, I, I'm sorry because it's clearly caused hurt. And that's the last thing I wanted to do. It's uh, potentially distracted from the work that we were doing to tackle spiking, mm -hmm. to help um, uh, predominantly women who are the victims of uh, spiking. Um, and, and I regret that. But I'm absolutely determined to continue the work, which I've been doing for years, both uh, as, as uh, Foreign Secretary and straight away as Home Secretary. I've told the department it is absolutely a priority sure. for me to improve the protection of, uh, yeah. of women and girls. How much uh, trouble and... were you in with Mrs C when you got home? <laughs> well, look, she... I mean, you know, you know um, her well. You've had the chance to meet her. You know um, uh, what an amazing woman she is. And that was, you know, that was part of the joke that I was making. Um, 
But, um, you know, she's always been incredibly supportive of me. She's also very honest. In she must have been very cross in with you. Of her, in terms of her feedback. But she also knows... <laughs> what did but she, she say? Also, I'm not going to go into detail. But she also knows... Was she cross? She also knows how completely committed I am to this issue. Was she cross? No, she wasn't cross. She's always supportive. <laughs> I'm sure she is. It's great to see you. Thanks for joining us. Cheers, Kate. Thanks very much indeed. Now, it's a tradition that is observed around... Oh, let me just ask you quickly. Um, Luke the Duke, Luke the Nuke, have you been watching the darts? I just saw it in the in the green room beforehand. Absolutely unbelievable. I know, I know. We all want him to. He's only 16. I know. Impressive.